quick! One well-trained warrior with an M240 can single-handedly change the tide of a battle. Medal of Honor recipient Sergeant Ryan Pitts used an M240 while wounded to fight off hundreds of enemy soldiers in the Battle of Wanat. Days later, Marine Lance Corporal Brady Gustafsson stopped another Taliban ambush with an M240, despite having one of his legs mangled in the initial moments of the fight. Pitts and Gustafsson are among a host of service members who can attest to the M240's reputation as the best machine gun in the American arsenal. In the Vietnam War, U.S. troops relied on the M60, but malfunction spurred the DoD to find an alternative. The M240 emerged as the best replacement and made its way into the U.S. arsenal in 1977 as a coaxial tank gun. Its use spread, and by the 90s, the infantry received a rare blessing in the form of the M240 Golf. Despite weighing in at 25.6 pounds and firing up to 950 rounds per minute, it left a lot to be desired. The M240 Bravo improved upon the Golf's design. It had more manageable recoil and came with a heat guard and a rail for optics. But it weighed four pounds more. Naturally, the Marine Corps was completely fine with the additional weight and adopted the Bravo. The Army, on the other hand, opted for the M240 Lima, which swapped the steel receiver with titanium and made the buttstock collapsible, shaving off five and a half pounds. The M240 grew to be a favorite weapon of those who carried it because of its extreme reliability and effectiveness, as proven thoroughly during its time in service. Most variants of the M240 are still in service, but new weapons, like the Army's XM250, indicate changes are coming to the U.S. military's machine gun roster. For service members worried that the new firearms won't arrive soon enough, stories like that of Pitts and Gustafsson should eliminate any doubt that the M240 can hold its own in a modern gunfight.